We had Matt Riddle backstage with Keith Lee. Matt Riddle's new character is he's, like, I got 50 emails and texts from people just talking, why is Matt Riddle so annoying? Is he a heel? I think he's still a baby face, but he's so annoying. That's and so bad. He's so, so annoying bad. that the storyline is he's being all annoying, and he turns around and Keith Lee has walked off on him. Keith Lee, the baby face. Yeah, well, the, the idea is, is that they think that, you know, because he talks like he's a stoner and everything, that they will give him this character that he just mumbles a lot of gibberish and garbage and says these things that just go, you know, like, you know, he's like, like, uh, makes no sense. So they've created a sense. character for this guy that has resulted in him being less over than at any point in his career anywhere on the planet Earth. But, but it's a concept. It sucks. Oh, does it suck? Oh, does it? Like I said, it's like it's 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 second match comedy and not even good second match comedy. It's just, you know, that's what it is. It's like, you know, he with that character. I mean, it's it's basically really bad. Our truth, you know, because our truth pulls the same thing off, but is actually quite charming at it. And this is like like the the, uh, the other side of our truth, like if our truth sucked at this. This is what it would be. Not that Riddle sucks at it because he actually delivers it the way that they're supposed to, but it's just it's just such a bad character. And it's so limiting, especially for a guy who's actually good. You know, it's like if, if like Matt Riddle couldn't work a lick, at least you would go, well, you know, I mean, it's something to put him on TV, you know, kind of like, you know, what Akira Tozawa does, although he can work, too, and they don't let him. But, um, yeah, this is just a killer. We have Retribution doing a promo, and Ollie is apparently trying to recruit Ricochet by yelling at him. And Slapjack does his promo about being left a husk of a man. Ollie has turned him into a weapon, and he's going to go out there and he's going to beat up Ricochet tonight. So Ricochet learns the error of his ways. So Ricochet does his inset promo before the match. And from listening to the promo, what I got out of it is, well... Simple story. He's going to go through all of Retribution one at a time, and then finally the big match is him and Ali. No. Well, like an idiot, I think this. And then no. they start the match, and everything's going along, and Rick State starts beating up all of the Retribution members who run a ringside. None of this is a DQ. And then he turns around, Slapjack grabs him, hit his finish. Slapjack pins Ricochet. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look. It's been done before. I mean, Ricochet's, you know, I mean, he's he's the poster boy for not being able to get over someone who would be, who was thought to be impossible to screw up, and they've completely screwed him up. By the end of this thing, he's going to be thinking, they're going to have him to where he even thinks he isn't good, and just happy that he's got a job. He's going to be because, asking to be in retribution, legitimately. He, well, that ain't going to help him any, any either, because that's a, a, a dead-end group, too. Well, quite frankly, it was Ricochet versus a Retribution member, and the Retribution member beat Ricochet. So, at this point, he actually is in a worse position than being in Retribution. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not in a better position. So, it goes to Retribution, he becomes Cedric Alexander. Big deal. Although yeah. Cedric Alexander is at least... At least he's on TV every week, whereas before he was in catering every week, so... I guess it's an improvement, but it's kind of like when you have these guys that are super, super talented and they're like, like they do like literally nothing with them. And then it's kind of like, well, they put them on TV and don't do anything with them on TV, but they're at least on TV. You start thinking like, well, at least they're on TV. And it's just like, but these guys are like really good. Um, and they're, you know, not portrayed as anything. And there's always, oh, they... You know, whatever Cedric can talk, but even it's like oh, he doesn't do a good promo, and it's like, well, f you know, so what? Not, I mean, I've seen a million guys who couldn't do good promos that were great in in, in other facets that got over. You know, you just, it, you know, you 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 accentuate the positives and you eliminate the negatives. That's all it is. You give him a tag team partner who can talk. Um, you give him a, a manager who can talk. Um, you. Just have him do really cool things and don't talk. I mean, there's so many ways around it. I mean, you don't accentuate somebody's negatives. 
Hey, we have Miz and Morrison. You don't, you don't script him because he's not a bad talker. He just doesn't do scripts well. And but you know he'll never he'll never be able to get out of that. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.